So we have Sim. Now, uh, Sim and Ben I've known for a few years from YouTube World. Nice bunch of uh, lads, brothers. Uh, Sim's going to pop on. I've also popped on their channel as well, by the way, so make sure you head over to We Are Tottenham TV. But I've set Sim some questions that I would like him to answer all about this weekend. So, Sim, take it away. What will the key battles be in the game, assuming um, you have a depleted lineup? The lineup here sent me is Dubravka in goal, Kraft, Shah, Byrne, and Hall in the back four, Gimarez long Saf and Willock along the midfield with Almiron, Isaac, and Gordon. For me, I think it's pretty obvious to, for sure at the start that the midfield battle is going to be extremely key with your depleted back, um, midfield three. Obviously, Bruno Gimarez has been in great form this season. He's a brilliant player, but long Staff and Willock, are they the kind of players who, are, when put under scrutiny, will be able to hold up to it so I think with Tottenham's aggressive style that could be a big big avenue where Tottenham get a lot of joy I also think with your fullbacks Kraft and Hall they're very um, haven't been playing too much this season then maybe not in their rhythm I don't think they're the best defensive fullbacks as well with Timo Werner and Brendan Johnson both in flying form I definitely think the fullbacks is definitely something we'll get at in terms of where we could be at risk, I think Anthony Gordon on the left-hand side could exploit the space that Pedro Porro very often leaves, not because he's bad defensively, just because we play this inverted role, but he leaves a lot of space on, on that side. So I think Anthony Gordon could be getting a lot of joy down that side. So that's definitely something to look at. Is it a great time to play us with such a depleted squad? I would definitely argue yes. I know Newcastle have definitely had a bit of an upturn in form recently, but I still look at their defence and they are shipping goals for fun, for free, against West Ham when you were 3-1 down against Everton you obviously got a conceded late on but uh, you know that's a game you definitely would have expected to win I look at Newcastle and it's always going to be tough at St James's Park but um, I do think that your defence is definitely one was one of your strong points and now it's something where you're not um, able to kind of stop the leakage at the back. I know you did keep a clean sheet in your last game against Fulham, so maybe there are signs of that turning around. But when I look at um, Newcastle's back line, in every game they seem to be conceding lots of goals. But to be fair, less so at St James's Park. So maybe uh, I'm not giving your defence enough credit, but I definitely think defensively you're a bit all at sea at the moment, and I think Tottenham could definitely look to exploit that considering we have a clean bill of health at the moment. Um, so I do think definitely it's a good time to face Newcastle with your depleted team and hopefully we can take advantage of that. Uh, next question says, our season was still in the hunt for 6th fifth or 7th. or seventh. Can we do it? I do think you can do it. Not because I think you're going to have a great end to the season, but I actually think you've closed the gap fairly well uh, between yourselves and Man United. There's now only two points in it. Man United are extremely inconsistent. West Ham are still in Europe. Chelsea are Chelsea. They've been inconsistent all year. So I think Newcastle have a really great shout, especially now Harvey Barnes is coming back. I don't know if you have any players coming back between now and the end of the season, but I look at your team, your former St. James's Park, I definitely think you've got a brilliant shout of top six. And I think if you end the season in Europa League, that will be represent a good season considering you spend a lot of the season, you know, down in 10th and struggling uh, in the league. I think if you end of European football, that, that keeps you um, ticking over in terms of being back in Europe and considering you're out of Europe for so long to be back in Champions League and then follow up with, Europe, with a Europa League campaign considering you went out in the group stage of the Champions League. I think would probably be a, a good look from for Newcastle. I wouldn't be if I was a Newcastle fan. Obviously when you're in the Champions League you want to build on that. So it'll be there obviously will be a twinge of disappointment, but it wouldn't be disastrous where if you to drop out of Europe completely, I think it would. And I think you've got a good shout. I think in terms of how your team is structured, how you play in general, I actually do think you play better than West Ham and Man United. I just think you've been struggling with those injuries. So I do think you've got a good chance of being in that top six uh, for sure, uh, given you've given yourself a fighting chance. Um, next question about our season are we going to get Champions League do we have to rely on the coefficient I do think Tottenham are going to get top four we have an extremely tough run in I actually think we probably do need to win to give us good to uh, at St James's Park to give ourselves a really good shot of finishing the top four considering our uh, games after that are Man City at home Arsenal at home Liverpool away um, and then we end the season with the two relegation clubs most probably in Burnley and Sheffield United so I do think there's there'll be point six points there 
and we have performed quite well against the top six at the moment. I actually think we're unbeaten against the top um, three teams at the um, at this current point in time. We drew with Arsenal, drew Liverpool, sorry, beat Liverpool and drew with Man City at the Etihad. So we do have quite a good record and I'm confident that we can step up in these games considering we're in a good place injury-wise. I think performance level recently... Mm hasn't been um, the best but it's been improving I think we went through quite a sticky patch in January and February and I think that's starting to turn around now um, and and showing that we've clawed back a uh, I think it was a six point deficit between us and Aston Villa we're now into the top four as we speak Aston Villa the reason I believe we will finish above them is because yes we have a tough running but so do they they still have to play Liverpool they still have to play um, Arsenal next week as well so just because we have tough games doesn't make their games any easier easier and I think we're playing better at the moment I do think we are better in terms of our squad and they have European football um, conference league to contend with so I do think Spurs will get top four and that would be a miraculous um, achievement for Antoine Coglu in his first season I know Eddie Howe did something similar and it didn't mean he kicked on in the next season so we're going to have to use that as a lesson that just because we're getting top four doesn't mean we're destined to build on it but considering it's his first year we sold Harry Kane all the difficulties surrounding it I think finishing the top four would be fantastic and I actually do think we'll do it and, t- and touching upon the postseason friendly obviously Spurs play Newcastle in Australia um, I think in, in uh, Melbourne uh, are three days after the season ends and for me I think it's a bit ridiculous I don't like it um, Obviously, it's a good opportunity for the Australian fans to witness their team coming to their country, and I'm not against that. I just think after a long season when the Euro's coming up... um I, I'm completely uninterested. I I'm, I like pre-season friendlies because when you, for, as a fan, when I'm watching them, you can learn something from them. How ready are you, is your team looking for the season? How is this new signing looking? A post-season friendly is actually pointless there's nothing you can learn from it there's nothing I can watch the game and even if we win the wipe the floor of you win 6-0 I can't learn anything from it and that's the difference in pre-season and post-season friendly so it is obviously just for money just for marketing and I understand why they're doing it because they're trying to grow their brands and all that kind of stuff uh, but I do think three days after the season um, after a long season where you know players are there um getting ready for the Euros and all this kind of things I do think it's completely unnecessary and I don't think it's going to be a great spectacle because I think players who are looking um, into the summer are going to be playing even Cop America as well they're not going to want injuries they're not going to put their all so I think they should have done a pre-season friendly I guess is my point rather than a post-season friendly but look that's my opinions thank you for having me on Newcastle Fan TV and good luck for Saturday Good set of lads, brothers, as I say at the start of the video. Go and check their channel out. We are Tottenham TV. Loads of content, live debates. They get fan involved. They go up and down the country as well, following their team. But that's it from me, everyone, and Sim. Sim, thanks for coming on. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.